this day, for this time of rest, for your Sabbath, for your Shabbat. And Abba, we thank you for the death, burial, and resurrection of our Mashiach, who frees us up from all forms of bondage, especially the bondage of sin and death. We thank you for sending your Son, for sending your Word. Come down here just as one of us to experience all that we experience and yet be completely without sin, as the Scripture says. So we thank you that the blood of our Messiah speaks very loud and speaks greater things than that of the blood of Abel. So Father, as we enter into this time of learning, and in our learning it's, it's also a time of worshiping you. We worship you when we open up the Scriptures. We come to the Scriptures, why? Because that's where we get recharged all over again. We get activated all over again. And we be ignited all over again, and the flame continues to burn and burn and burn. So we just thank you for this week's Torah portion, which is so prophetic of the times that we have already been in, and the times that have passed, and the times that are coming upon us. We thank you, Abba, for this book, for Shemot. And we also thank you for the groups that are studying the book of Korah, even today, because that is also prophetic of the times that we're in. We just thank you, Abba, that you have called us by name. You have handpicked each and every one of us. You have handpicked Israel. You declare that Israel is your firstborn. And that through the Messiah, we find our identity as his body, as his people. So we thank you, Abba, that today, Abba, I just pray that our ears would be open, our minds would would be completely receptive to the unadulterated word of Yah, and that your word would go forth like a sword, your word would go forth like a hammer, your word would go forth like fire, and your word would go forth like living water that has been released from the wells of salvation, from the wells of Yeshua, of Yahshua. So we thank you, Abba. We lay all of our burdens down before you. We lay all of our cares upon you. Scripture says, you said in your word, the writers, cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. So we thank you, Abba, that according to your word also that if we want to find out who we are, our life is hidden in secret, in the secret chambers of the heart of our Messiah. So we just thank you, Abba. We pray and ask that your malachim, your messengers, your angels would be here amongst us to help keep us protected and guarded from all the wiles of the enemy. So we thank you, Abba, for this day. We thank you for your Torah, your instructions, the instructions from a loving Father to guide and direct us no matter what we might think or no matter what or how we might feel. Your word, your instructions will lead and guide us so that we don't fall off one side. Of the, of the cliff or the other side of the cliff that we would stay steady upon a narrow path. So we thank you, Abba. We thank you for our Kohen Haggadol, our High Priest, Yahushua Mashiach, who is the Melech Sadiq. He is the King of Righteousness, the, res, the, the Risen King. So we thank you, Abba, in advance for this time, and we dedicate this time to you. And may we lift up our voices before you and, and sing your praises each and every day as the celestial bodies sing the praises of Yah, the creation sings the praises of Elohim. All the animals declare the praises of Elohim. All of creation in, on this planet and around the universe declare the praises of the King of Kings and the Master of Masters, even in the worlds that we cannot see. So we thank you, Abba, that we have nothing to fear but the fear of you and the walk uprightly before you. So we thank you, Abba, for all that are here and even those that might come, those that are watching or will be watching via the camera on the other side of that lens that you would minister right to them, right where they're at. So we thank you, Abba, for this season. And can we all say Shabbat Shalom and give your name for a big Shabbat <laughs> Hey, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
those letters, in order for them to, to make themselves manifest in the life of, of that man and that woman of Israel, Elohim has to step in on the scene to break the power of the bondage that has kept them bondage, kept them in bondage. So the subtitle today is The Kingdom Man versus The Strong Man. So this is going to be very interesting, and I'm, I'm being very wise with the Father's wisdom. But let's go on with this. Well, if you got your scriptures, turn to Exodus chapter 1, and we'll get to that in just a second. But after the resurrection, during the Omer count, the disciples asked in a very, very important question. One, they didn't ask the Messiah, before you leave, before you leave, you know, can you teach us how to do miracles? Mm -hmm. Or no, before you leave, before you leave, can you teach us how to multiply bread and fish just by holding a basket? Or uh, can you teach us how to raise the dead? None of these things. He did not. They did not ask the Messiah at his resurrection for them to teach them any of those types of things. They they asked two specific questions, major questions, during the the time that the Messiah was here on earth while he was alive. They asked him a, a specific question, which was this: Can you teach us how to pray while he was alive? Why living men and women know how to pray? Dead men and dead women can't. So if you're alive and well, then you should know how to pray if you've come through the door. Why? Because prayer is what got you there. Someone who was alive prayed for you and I to, so that we can get to this spot. And the other question that they asked, which was very, very important, and this was after the resurrection, are you going to restore the kingdom right now? And the scripture is found in the book of Acts, and it says this. It is not for you. They say, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom? That was their question out of all things. And the Mashiach says this, it's not for you to know the times and the seasons. So let me ask you a question. Is it our responsibility to, uh, to comprehend and know the times and seasons, the Moedim? Yes. Yeah. Is Shabbat, sir? Yes. But this is something different. It's speaking of the establishment of the kingdom. And the Messiah says, it is not for you to know the times and seasons which the Father has put in his own power. But you shall receive power after when the Ruach HaKodesh, the set apart spirit, has come upon you. He says, what you need to focus on is this. Be still and know that I am Yodhi Bhagavan. Don't jump the gun. Don't try to infuse the kingdom with flesh. If you try to infuse the kingdom with flesh, it is going to be severed and beheaded by the Romans. Be still and receive your empowerment on the day of Shavuot Pentecost. You guys, you guys get that? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Good, I get it too. We're in agreement. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on. But the name comes to deliver Israel and the power that disrupts the natural and the material world. So when this name is manifest in a way that was never manifest to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it is going to manifest in such a way that it is going to disrupt the material world. I don't know about you guys, but you talk about science, uh, 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 sci-fi type stuff, that is crazy, crazy to me. That, that those letters that make up that name, the name that, that is a representation of the unseen one, disrupted the natural world. It caused chaos in Mitzrayma. And I say it like that because that's what it was in the book of Genesis. Mitzrayma. And when it became Mitzrayim, that name says, you know what, Egypt, thank you for closing your borders. Now there can be the miraculous birth of my people. <laughs> thank you for closing off all the access points. They were all in and outs at one time, and then you just had them as ins and no outs, and now you just eliminated that you got what you think you got to take possession of. Now you close them all. Thank you for closing the four corners of Egypt now the miraculous birth can transpire and take place. And that's what's going to happen in the book of Mitzrayim. So whoever's watching, whoever's listening in here, there's a miraculous birth about to happen in this week's Torah portion. The Torah is filled with simple things to comprehend. From the simple things to the deep things that cause you to become what? Immovable. To cause you and I to become immovable and planted. See, the Father wants us to be immovable and unshakable, especially when the storms of life come.
Because the storms of life come and all of a sudden, when it gets too windy, it can easily blow us out of our position of where we're standing. The Father says, no, 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 I created a boat for you to dwell in until the Messiah comes to call you by name. And if you get out of that boat without the, the voice of the word, you will sink in the chaotic storms. Mm -hmm. How many people are standing people? Raise your hand. How many people are just sitting people? <laughs> so I want to show something that I've showed before, which I think is pretty amazing with uh, gray sheet. I, I love this. I, I really love this. But gray sheet, if you look at the Hebrew word gray sheet, that's the first word of our scriptures in the beginning, uh, gray sheet. Each and every one of the letters, the initial letters of those words, actually declare a phrase that is so powerful. In the beginning, Rashi, the purpose of man's creation is that he investigates my secrets of the Torah. That is our purpose. Why? Because when we investigate the, the hidden things that are inside of the scriptures, then we will discover what the kingdom purpose for our existence is on this earth in the world to come. We'll find out why we're here. But if we look to the world... Instead of looking to the voice of this word, we will be distracted, blinded, and left for nothing. And the Father is what? He is no respecter of persons. He is not a respecter of persons, you guys. Just because I'm up here being a voice for his word does not mean he puts me on some pedestal. Actually, there's a greater judgment for me because I, I'm speaking. Whoever wants to speak and teach the word, the scripture says, be careful. For too many teachers, there is a greater judgment, a greater examination for what will transpire. So if you're excited and you want to teach the whole world, hallelujah, make sure the Father called you to do it first. Because if not, and you waver and you give up and you take your hands off that plow, the Father says, you might have taken your hands off the plow, but that ox is still moving. Now you better go catch up because you're accountable for what happens. No matter what. Believe me, I'm being nice. Not really nice. Those of you, you know, that want that PowerPoint and want this study, if you want the Word document, I actually have on this Word document the entire Torah portion. So, you you know, it's better to open up your scriptures, but on the paper, that's why I have so many sheets here, too. Yeah. The, the entire Torah portion is in there. So, you guys, if you want that, it's yours, all right? All right. <laughs> So nobody wants it, you got it. <laughs> As we enter this book, we have to take a step back and ask some questions. Is it really about a people a long time ago? Or is this something much, much more? We need to ask these questions. Can this permeate into our very lives today and what had transpired back then? Can we look at what happened today and parallel that to right now? You better believe we can. Not you better believe we can. If we throw the, the Old Testament out the window, how are we going to know what's coming next? We're not going to know. We're going to have second guess. And it's like it's like trying to, 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 to swing at a ball and they spin you around like a piñata, remember? And, and you're trying to hope, if I don't hit that, maybe I'll hit the cousin. And go, like, where's, where's he at? Or whatever. But it's like trying to hit a ball and you have no idea when it's coming. We see the, the, the Tanakh, the Old Testament, the Torah, the Prophets, and the Writings direct us to what will come. Directs us to warn us of what lies ahead. Torah is actually prophecy. A Torah means instructions, basically. It speaks of what was and what will be. Shemot, the book of names, also known as Exodus, is about a people who went down into a land, Mitzrayim, and that very land pretty much swallowed them completely up in all that it was practicing. See, when Joseph was alive, it was a different story. But this land pretty much swallowed them up and absorbed them up and contained them in the entire culture of that time. That whole mixed culture absorbed the people and swallowed them completely whole. See, that's what happens is the, the world, young people, I'm glad you're in here, youth, this world wants to swallow you whole, wants to, wants to just swallow you up like Jonah with a fish and have you digested and manifested through their system. 
to where you're not recognizable anymore. Same thing with us, not just the youth, but even adults. It's been like this for a long time. And the people, they also lost their identity during this time. They became enslaved by the culture and infected by the system, which is also known as Hellenism. That's very broad. Even back then. Hellenism was back then, too. Before Helena was here. See, Helena, when she came, then it was just pretty much, it just was thumbtack to her. And things begin to manifest. Well, we'll just name it after her and this false worship idolatry came. And we're going to try to uh, assimilate all the people into the Roman idolatrous practices and start labeling. It, it, it's been going on way before this lady was even here. Way before the movie Troy. Way before that. <laughs> but it's very fascinating what's going on. The descendants of Jacob, or known as Israel, have now come a long way in life. And listen to this. It's pretty powerful. They've come a long way in life. You see, the promise was from Abraham when he got that promise in the book of Genesis, all the way up leading to the season that we're in in the book of Exodus right now. There's a great deliverance, a great salvation going to transpire. So it was about 400 years. As some say, the scriptures also say 430. Well, where's the 30 come from? When Ephraim left 30 years before the 400-year mark, so really 370, not 430. It was 30 years prior to the 400 mark that Ephraim says, you know what, we can't wait anymore. Let's go. What happened to Ephraim? You can read in the book of Jasher. They were taken out. It's either chapter 75 or 85, right in that little area. From the beginning of chapter 1 all the way to you know, 75 to 85. Well, I want to give you a little historical uh, insight. So there's been some 210 years of actual slavery for Israel when they were here. We've heard this before. 400 plus years from the time of promise. Looking at history from our history now. You guys ready? You might want to note this down. This is very important. From 1789 to 1999. How many years is that? 210 years. We see a pattern emerge again. And interesting, at the end of every 70 years... The world elite wipe out the dead of the people wherever there's more dead. And I'm not here to talk about banking. I don't really know much about banking or anything, but I know the strategies behind certain things. But wherever there's the greatest poverty, the elite are the most wealthiest. Because it's a reversal. Where there's great debt and great poverty, there's great credit and great wealth for the elite that is trying to suck Man and woman dry of all of their life force that is inside of them, all of their soul. So at the end of every 70 years, the world elite wipe out the dead. International bankruptcy from 1789 to 1999, we see this. Every single president that comes into the United States Corporation agrees to keep the bankruptcy going for the crown of England. How many people like, like basil? The plant? Yes. Well, it's good you asked the plant. The plant, good. But there's another thing called basil, B-A-S-E-L. You heard of it, right? It is the main world bank that controls the IMF and the world banks beneath it, and then all the other stuff comes up, and everything is affiliated with that. So it's the same type of system we see going on in Mitch Ryan. It happened then, and it's been happening now. <coughs> They always bring forth a president to keep things going. So as we see the descendants of Jacob are about to experience a new king rise up who doesn't know Joseph. And the 210-year mark of slavery that made Mitzrayim rich through the energy of the people is about to make the bank system, the economic system of Egypt, go bankrupt. It's the same thing. I'm not going to try to get political, but I see these patterns. It's so powerful. Here in America, we were a free nation from 1776 to 1789 until England picked up the bankruptcy notes and made all America debtors all over again. This is why there has to be the power of redemption, salvation, and deliverance in the lives of each and every individual. In a broad sense, the book of Shemot, Exodus is the book of names. For it is in Mitzrayim that Jacob's children will go through a metamorphosis from the children of Israel. Listen to this. They will go from the children of Israel to a, the nation of Israel. Are you guys getting this? They're going to have a metamorphosis. You see, if you want to remain as children, listen to what I'm saying, you guys. This is so powerful. 
As long as Pharaoh saw Israel as little children, little babies, then they can control them. But until Israel comprehended that we are no longer, we are not your baby and we are not little children. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High. We are Israel. We're a nation of people. Therefore, Mitzrayim, Egypt, Pharaoh could no longer hold a nation called Israel. But they can, Pharaoh was able to hold what was called a baby. Pharaoh was able to hold what was called little baby lines. He was able to hold what was called children. Why? Because a child doesn't know how to think for themselves. They need guidance from mama and daddy. So Pharaoh says, you know what? We read it. The, the, the intuition was there in gray sheep. What did the Pharaoh say? It was a reversal. What did the Pharaoh say back then? He says, Joseph is like a father to me. So Joseph was going to govern all of Mitzrayim and bring transformation, but a new king rose up that didn't know Joseph. Therefore, it was reversed right back after 210 years, and we see this cycle happening all the time. As soon as the roles are, are reversed, then those are the ones who control the entire scenario. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is really crazy stuff. Should I stop now? Nope. No. Stop one minute, right? Names are important, but a name that is not a name is not who you and I are. A name points to the life of a man or a woman. Names characterize who you are. A name is given to a soul, and then that soul will fill that name with good or fill that name with evil in his or her lifetime. Your name is not who you are. My name is really not who I am. It represents who I am. That's why this book's called the Book of Names. It is so broad. Yohebavhe represents the one that is of that name. And we can say that. So if I ask you guys a question, I'm not really looking for an answer, but it's just a question to think about. What have you filled your name with? What have you filled your name with? It's, I'm not looking for a response. Just a question for you to think about this. What have you filled your name with? Good? Tov? Things that are functional? Or evil? Ra? That which destroys a vision. Only you and I can answer that as individuals. So now we have the person of Yaakov, where the man Yaakov Israel becomes the name of a branded nation of people when? While they are in Mitzrayim. Why are they, while they are in the place of constrictions and restrictions and bondage, they become a nation of people. Because the squeezing process is what is used by the Creator to form that people. If it remained open doors with the new king in, then things would have gotten even worse and worse and worse. So the Father used the whole situation to close in the gaps to bring forth a nation of people born from a womb that had not even been touched before. This is also a book of beginnings. The beginning of what? Redemption and deliverance. Out of bondage and an end to the bondage of brick building rooted in straw gathering. So it's, a, it's the book about breaking the bricks and exposing the straw that formed the bricks and the living stones begin to build the true living house of the Almighty. Because if you were to shatter those bricks, Inside of those bricks, the straw is screaming out, saying, what did we do wrong? No, you were in ignorance, you little straw. <laughs> you had no idea. <laughs> this is so like just parallel, man. That the living men and women that, you saw the cartoon, I'm not trying to be funny, they were just, just walking in that, in that muck, and they were creating, they kept growing straw inside of the mud. And they used that a straw became assimilated with the mud and then hand formed by the living men and women into bricks for these idolatrous creations for Pharaoh. And ever since then you stood, the straw became the bricks and just stood as these fortresses 
to magnify the Pharaoh. But what if, as the Mashiach says, if they are silent, then these stones will cry out to me. Yeah. Imagine if something happened and the Creator touched the stones of Pharaoh's wall and those stones where Israel was silent at one time for 210 years. Imagine the Father says, you know, before I destroy this system, I want you, Pharaoh, and all of you around here to hear the voice of the straw screaming out. He touched those bricks. They would have exploded every building in Mitzrayim. Mm -hmm. Everything would have exploded. Because when the believer cries out, how do I know that? Because we're going to read it in just a minute. I'm just kind of leading up to it. When the believer begins to cry out, it's an explosion that reaches the heavens. Yeah. Some might say, not really. Oh, yeah, the scripture goes on to say in chapter 2, when I heard their cry, then I came to deliver them. Right. So when the straw begins to speak, the deliverance begins to come. themselves entrenched in Mitzrayim, which is ancient uh, in Egypt. Mitzrayim can also be spelled as Matzerim. Say Matzerim. That's the word for constrictions and limitations. Next week's four portion, we're going to connect the actual power that frees the people of Yah himself. At first they enjoyed, listen to this, at first they enjoyed all the rights, listen, at first, they enjoyed all the rights of citizenship in Mitzrayim. Under this new king, which arose in Mitzrayim, their rights quickly disappeared, and they found themselves as the poor class, and then finally to the outright slave citizens of Egypt. The name Yohebabe brings us out of a citizen-slave mentality into the place of free men and free women. Any free men and free women in here? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You guys are you guys are amazing. If I give you a hard time, I'm pray for me. I need deliverance. I'm gonna tell you, you know what? I'm standing up here, I'm not kidding. Completely in Abba's strength. I have zero. No. So bear with me. This is I'm completely, completely on the Father's strength right now as I'm speaking to you guys. Believe it. So now we see the nation of Hebrews that have been working in slavery their whole lives. Generation, remember, after generation, with nothing to show for it except for pain resentment, bitterness, a sense of hopelessness, gray hair, weakness, sickness, brittleness, and hatred, and forgetfulness of who they really are. All because of what had transpired. All of it. The secret for surviving in difficult times and dangerous exile are also in just a few words. When a man is living in an environment like Egypt, where the way of life stands in complete contradiction to the spirit of Torah, the first thing we must grasp is the welfare of our sons and daughters. As in the, the scriptures it says this, and these are the names of the children of Israel. So in the midst of when all hell's about to break loose, you better make sure you know the identity of your sons and daughters. If you don't know the identity of your sons and daughters, if you don't know the identity of your sons and daughters, I'll tell you this, Pharaoh knows. And he uses one term for all of your sons and daughters. And that's going to be for you to find out. Pharaoh has one term for all. And he has, Pharaoh has a system that can come and take what is, what belongs to him legally 
He can knock on your door. You can pray, Shandai, Shandai, Shabbat, and all that other stuff, Sidi, Tommy, Bhutai. Whatever it is, you can pray all you want in Hebrew, Spanish, Chinese. If you have not heard the call from the ground up, the Father's going to say, I give you warning. You cried out, but you rejected my warning. Now the judgment has come. Wow. We cannot be super spiritual saying the Father's going to do The Father has warned us now, and I'm speaking now. The Father has warned us now, and I'm speaking as his spokesperson. He had to empty me out of all my own strength to come here with boldness to warn you guys, warn anyone watching, you better know the voice of Abba according to his instructions and his direction because the times are about to come down hard on those who are citizens of the world. Be warned, you heard it. You heard it. The Torah warns us. You know what's even more scary? Look at this. When, when, when everything's going well, the enemy says, you know what, let me help that all well more, a little more. See, when Abba wants to, to, to bless us, he brings people. When the enemy wants to distract us, he brings people. Mm -hmm. So the enemy says, you know what, they're a threat to me. Let me really make it seem like they got it going on. Let me give them all that so they stay distracted. Yeah. And at the last minute, help them get with the lost thing. Warned. Abba knows best than all the rest. <laughs> Uh, let me get right to the uh, Torah portion. Let me read the Torah verse. In Breshi 46.4. So we, we have nothing to worry about. Nothing. In Breshi 46.4 says this. I myself am going down with you. That's number 75. Remember you read the book of Acts. Who's number 75? You match it with the... The Tanakh is like, wait, there's 73, 74, because Moses is in Yochavet's uh, belly. Mm -hmm. All right, there's 74. Who the heck is 75? No one told me that. They're not even here. Oh, it's Jacob. No, Jacob passed away. Talking about the promised land. It is Yodhi Bavke, who is number 75, who is really number one. He says, I'm going way ahead of you guys. I'm going to go down right. in there. And, and, and he said, he said, I'm just going to scope it out. I'm going to look at this. They're not even going to know my presence is there, but their gods are going to know. Yeah. Right? When he his presence just walks through this, the streets of Mitzrayim, the spiritual entities start to shake and start to be afraid and start to fear. Why? He says, I'm, wherever I walk, that's where my sons and daughters are going to go. And I really believe, if I were to just really spice this up, is yod heh -Bab had paid his last visit, which was his first visit, in Goshen. Why? Because judgment must begin in the house of Yah. Mm -hmm. There has to be a purifying, a purification. The Father says, I have got to turn the heat up so high so that there is no more of your flesh deafening your ears and blinding your eyes. <clears throat> so we're going to get right into the Torah portion. Exodus 1.1, 1, 1, and these are the names of the, of the children of Israel who came to Mitzrayim with, with Jacob, each one with his, with his household. The scripture says here, excuse me, Habayim. And these are the names of the children of Israel. Look at those letters highlighted. It actually gives us the Hebrew word hashvi, which means the captivity. So right off the bat, we are given a revelation of what is going on. Meaning while in Egyptian bondage, they didn't change their name. They maintained Israel and their identity ultimately. The physical body was in captivity, but the identity could never be in bondage. And interesting that the value, remember every Hebrew letter has a, a value to, to the letters and numbers, which brings out beautiful things, is equivalent to the Hebrew phrase, ha-chodesh. Say ha-chodesh. It doesn't mean the new moon. It just means the renewal of a season. So we see all of these things transpire right before our eyes. What is, the, what is the connecting factor that unites Israel? It's Shabbat, the same thing. And these are the names of Israel's sons who came to Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. These highlighted letters, Et Yaakov Ish, 
For the man Jacob, spell Shabbat. Shabbat unites the people of God. If anything, at least come together on Shabbat, right? Shabbat. So when we make room for his Sabbath and say, you know what? Man, do I have to go and do this? Do I really have to do this? I'm busy right now. I don't want to. Okay, all right, I'll do it. No, no, it's not that we have to. We get to observe his Shabbat. We get to open up the door and say, Abba, you know what? May your spirit, may your essence come in the midst of my house. Shabbat is given to Israel and keeps us united because it is the sign of the covenant. The word covenant is seen 292 times, which is the same for a Hebrew phrase, ha ifriya, which is the Hebrew women that will give birth to the sons of Israel. And they brag about it. They're like, wait, wait, you guys are on your backs trying to push out and fight gravity. We go with gravity because the world turns for us. The world rotates for the people of Yah. The world can become the servant of the, of the midwives that bring forth those who are crossing over. Don't let the gravitational pull cause a, a breach in your birth. Give birth the way the Spirit says to give birth. With boldness. You guys sound a little excited? <laughs> I really am. It's good to be empty and, and crushed. It really is. Yeah, yeah. The Father just does some things. Ah. Exodus 1 2. Scripture goes on to say this is Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Louis, Yahuda, not Yehuda, Yahuda, Yisachar, Yisachar, right? Zebulun and Benjamin, Dan and Naphtali, God and Asher, and all the souls who were descendants of Yaakov were 70 beings. Do you guys know who you are? You're Israel, but you are a living spirit. You are a living soul. You guys are a soul inside of a fleshly body. We are souls. Do you guys get it? You guys are alive. When you, when you look at your, your father and your mother, your brother, your sister, your sons, your daughters, your grandsons and granddaughters, when you look at them, you're not looking at a body. You're looking at something you can't see. Mm -hmm. A living soul inside of a fleshly body that is decaying and dying, but that soul will live forever. Yeah. And it's priceless. It is the sekula. It is the treasure hidden in the field called the world. To be in the body is to be in the world, but the living man is on it. Why? Because you have to realize that this fleshly body is just a sandal. <laughs> it's just a sandal. It's just a shoe. You don't believe me? I'm going to show you. Or, for those watching, or someone watching, I'm going to show you. <laughs> You want to be a Jew? I'll show Jew. I don't know. <clears throat> so these were the sons. So we're going to look at, I think I have Mitzrayim here. Hopefully I do. Oh, yes, I do. Beautiful. I didn't screw this up. Thank you, Abba. So we're going to look at Mitzrayim, which is Mitzrayima. You guys notice something with Mitzrayima? Mm -hmm. You see this? Mitzrayima? This is during the days of Joseph. Look at that. It's all good. Open. Open. It's open on all sides. Mitzrayim was open. The Pharaoh at that time says, you know what? There's something about this Joseph that we have never experienced before. As a matter of fact, when Moses was born, you know what, they, what, what some of the tradition is? That Moses was being groomed to be the next Pharaoh. So the Masorites, in their all goodness, even though it's... Moshe could be an Egyptian name. I don't know. I've seen all the arguments. I just leave it be. But I do know this, is that there's a letter missing out of Moses' name. You guys know what the letter is? The letter Vav. Vav is removed. Why? Because Moshe was not connected to Mitzrayim. He was there temporarily. Moshe had a different connection. 
He had a melech tzaddik, a higher order of responsibility that he was about to walk in. But look at this beautiful revelation that the Father gives us. When you keep reading in the Torah portion, you see Mitzrayim on, then you see Mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is closed off. Look at that. It is closed off at the end. Pharaoh says, now you have become my prisoners. Thank you so much. We had a crazy week, you guys. <laughs> you know I got bit with a black, by a black widow on my hand. Oh. While we were in the vehicle, and we probably could have crashed. And there was a lizard in our house. And a lizard came yes. in our house, stood under my desk, and really wanted to learn the Torah. He says, I'm tired of being uh, 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 So he took his tail off. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, 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 <laughs> but I started looking at the spiritual forces of these things. There's always signs. My son shared something with the Black Widow. He said, watch out with the Jezebels. Don't let them reduce you. Don't let them do that. Don't, don't let that black widow venom you know that no venom the only thing that was punctured was right by my vein on my hand right but it didn't my hand did not swell up so i said man is this like paul remember so yeah i was all excited i was like wow <laughs> <laughs> I that snake i was like i'm the snake that spider <laughs> <laughs> and my son said this i said i'm gonna have to share this it's so powerful minister man i'm gonna have to write it down he says, you know what Jezebel does? She tries to beat the man all the way to the ground, but she doesn't know that that's where man came from when he first met the clock. Uh, mm -hmm. He says, so when that man is beaten down, hopefully he remembers his origins so he can make Teshuvah and rise up above the Jezebel and stand as a true man. Yeah. 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 So look at this. Exodus 1 6. And Joseph died, and all his brothers in all that generation. Verse 7. And the children of Israel bore fruit and increased very much, multiplied and became very strong, and the land was filled with them. Joseph's name actually means to multiply and increase. Fruit and increase is the same word that we even get tzitziot from. <laughs> to blossom into bud. So here, here's the question. When, li listen, here's the question. When all hell's breaking loose, we need to ask ourselves, not our neighbors, and say, well, in the midst of everything that's happening in your life, do you think maybe you should be bearing some fruit? No, we need to ask ourselves, say, Abba, in the midst of all this going on, let some fruit come forth. Yes. If that's the last thing that will come forth from my life, let there be a non-GMO fruit-bearing batch for others to wow. eat. And so be it, even in the midst of all that is happening. Even in the midst of lizards and black widows. <laughs> Joseph understood or comprehended the purpose of his existence. He was called to preserve the future of his father's house. He said it in Genesis 45. And taking a journey forward is the life of Mashiach, Ben Yosef, which is Yahushua. When you become a fruit bearer, those around you will eat of your fruit, which contain, contains the seed of his word. And this is how we multiply and increase. Chapter 1, verse 8 goes on to say, and here's where everything, the game begins to change. Then a new sovereign arose over Mitzrayim. And it's funny because when, remember when Obama was, was being inaugurated? This was the Torah portion of his inauguration. I knew it. Everyone was like, ooh, he's the enemy. Then a new sovereign rose over Mitzrayim, but they, they forgot. They said, wait, you know what? If that's the Antichrist, then that means the last trump is going to sound. And that happened right, after his right. double term. Right. <laughs> that's a double term. <laughs> Bianca told me to say that. Verse 9, and he said to his people, See, the people of the children of Israel are more and stronger than we. Come, let us act wisely toward them, and lest they increase, and it shall be when fighting befalls us that they will join our enemies and fight against us and shall go up out of the land. You better believe they were afraid. You see, when Hebrews begin to multiply under pressure, boy, oh boy, the system gets riled up, gets stirred up. 
but it begins with the mindset. We need to prepare for a greater exodus as Jeremiah spoke of in chapter 16. But on a level that is inside each and every one of us, there must be an exodus in the mind, there must be an exodus in the heart, there must be an exodus in our physical life. There must be an exodus that we all experience in this, that we have to come out of her, my people. That is so broad. Not just out of the, the church or Sunday church. Oh, I got it now. Torah. Ah! <laughs> Thinking you arrived and then no, you're still the same guy, the same boy. No, you, you, you that, that's just a physical part of it. There is a you got to make an exodus all the way through. You need to fall to the ground and say, Abba, split me wide open like Abraham did those pieces and put me back together when you see fit. How many people can pray something like that? Father, you know, forgive me. You know, I slipped up. Stop people. <laughs> uh, Father, you know, just, no, no, no. Really, really getting into prayer and talking to the Father and then staying there to listen and saying, in all this, what do you want me to love? Pray like we read the Psalms. It's not some elegant thing. It's, it is just real. Be, let your spirit man cry out. Why? Because deliverance will come from above. Uh. Will set us free. I'm going to be honest with you guys. That's where I'm at right now. This is me. I can't talk about nobody else. Where I'm at, I am screaming to the Father like this. I was like this in the restroom. What do you want me to do? What is it that you want for my life right now? You guys have to do that. Come on. I've been here before talking like that on my face before the Father saying, either I am done and you can Kill me now, or what is next? You need to pick me up because I can't even stand up right now. We need to talk to him and then be still and wait and trust him. So we can't just go around and say, you know, what's the next uh, paleo class? Oh, I'm there, brother. I'm there. I got that down. <laughs> then let the strength of that paleo destroy your flesh. Let the first letter be a real ox come and charge and bulldoze your flesh over before you try to give a true revelation. Let the first revelation say, you know what? I experienced the Aleph. That Aleph destroyed my flesh. Now I can become a letter base for the house of the Almighty. Now he can inhabit me. And I can call him Abba. 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 When is he going to be really? Huh? I don't know about you guys, but things are beginning to be more and more real for me. When I say me, I can also include my wife, because she's right there. Saying, come on, get up, what are you doing? No. Stop crying. 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 Oh, you guys are judging me now. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> We're just kidding on camera, we're only playing around. Just relax, take a deep breath. You see the camera expanding? Uh, right now. <laughs> right, huh? Verse 11. So they set slave masters over them. Why? Because they were intimidated. You guys know that you're intimidated. You know what? If there's someone, not maybe not in here, but watching wherever, if your marriage seems to be attacked, pray for every marriage you can think of. If your sons and daughters are being attacked by the enemy and distracted, start praying for everyone's sons and daughters. And here's the key. Here's the home run hit. Pray for the ones you don't like, for their sons and daughters, and bless them. And say, Father, break that, raise them up in your ways. May the, may the drugs be broken off of them, the gang banging, the hatred, the animosity, the resentment. May they be reunited with their fathers and mothers. All right, devil, you want to keep on. I'm just like Pentecostal, right? You want to keep messing with yeah. the family? Where's the next family? I'm going to pray for them. Yeah. Father, bless them abundantly. You mess with me, I'm going to keep yeah. going. That's how you That's get that arrow and reverse it and shoot it right back at him. You pull the sword of the spirit. Some people still have a little pocket knife like this. Come on now. <laughs> no power like this. We got to cut their hands. Why? Because the word has not become alive. It's got to be a sword so you don't cut yourself. Why? Because it's first internalized. So say, nah, I have a switch All right, see, you guys are messing me up. So I say, oh, I'm going to 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 say, oh,
Verse 12, but the more they afflicted them, the more they increased and grew. Do we increase or we decrease? You guys see the enemy? He is messing me up, man. As I'm moving, and as he's gone. Is the refrigerator filled yet? Yes, oh, that's good. No, it's not filled yet, then you still stand up. <clears throat> The more they increased, the more they grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. Why was there such a dread upon Mitzrayim? Because the affliction only increased the Hebrews and caused them to parat. Say parat. Parat means to break forth. With no limitations, the Mashiach says the kingdom, the Machut, is is inside of you. He says that the kingdom is in you. That means I'm in you. And if I'm in you, this flesh can't hold me. Right. It is going to explode. Parats means to burst forth, to break through all barriers, not some, every single one of them that others put up and that you put up. You know, we are our greatest enemies. And you know what? Parats, which means to break through. Pause that camera. Parats <laughs> <laughs> has the same value as Shalom. You see, Shalom, when you look at those letters, it can mean a whole lot. It, it can mean, I like this pictographic definition of Shalom. Say Shalom. Shalom. Shalom means to destroy or reduce the chaotic situation that tends to be your teacher or what rises up or what's the tallest or that chaos that has now become your taskmaster false shepherd and you're walking around in bondage shalom says no 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 in the midst of all that you will still have a reservoir of shalom it will still be inside of you. Why? Because shalom cannot be contained by bondage. Yeah. It cannot. Mm -hmm. No matter what type of affliction might come, we break forth in wholeness and shalom. When we look at the verse in Hebrew, it says the more they afflicted him, the more he grew. Why? Because the Hebrews, in the midst of affliction, it brings everything back together. As one spirit, kol ha nefesh, one voice, one soul, one spirit. Doesn't scripture say, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world? Yes, it does, right? When the world afflicts Israel, it's as if they are doing it to our Mashiach who is seated at the right hand of power. We are seated with him in heavenly places. We don't know what that is. I still wish I really comprehend what that is. I, I have a little bit. But that is a way out verse. Am I yelling? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, there you go. <laughs> when you can endure to the end, this will confound your enemy. And there is a future affliction coming. And we see the very tip of that more than ever before. Now, actually, it's here. It's really here. It is here. The master slave drivers, they all got names. And I would get in big trouble if I start saying stuff, but you know what? I'll leave that up to you guys so you can get in trouble. <laughs> Exodus 1.13. And the Mitzrites made the children of Israel serve with harshness. Not just serve, but sure, serve with harshness. And they made their lives bitter, verse 14, with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all kinds of works of the world. I mean, feel. All their work which they made them do was with harshness. Then the sovereign of Mitzrayim spoke to the Hebrew midwives. Of whom the name of one was Shifra, and the other one was Pua, which is believed to be, because of certain writings, the mother of Moshe and his sister. 
And he said, when you deliver the Hebrew women and see them on the verse, I'll throw this out again, I've done it before. And it is a son, then you shall put him to death. You know, as soon as you come upon the true covenant relationship with the Almighty that frees you, Pharaoh says, as soon as they land on the covenant, can you please cut them off from their inheritance? Can you cut them off from their inheritance? Please, can you do that? The Hebrew midwife's like, dude, man, what has he been smoking? What has he been drinking? What is he hiding? What God has tickled his underarms? But if it is a daughter, then she shall live. Why? So that we can keep the assimilation going on a greater scale. But the midwives feared Elohim, saying, We fear not. We fear not. We fear not. Father, we pray that, that this uh, daydreaming spirit will just, think, there it goes, there it goes. <laughs> Daydreaming spirit, like cast that out. The... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's trying to get the midwives to do this, but the midwives feared Elohim and did not do as the sovereign of Mitzrayim, of Mitzrayim commanded them, and kept the male children alive. So the sovereign of Mitzrayim called for the midwives and said to them, "Why have you not done this and kept the male children alive?" And the midwife said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like your women, Pharaoh. <laughs> Laying on their back, never on guard. Even while we are giving birth to sons and daughters, we are guarding our surroundings. Because the most devastating and diabolical time is when someone is about to give birth to a son and daughter of the Most High. You have to watch your surroundings. Why have you done this? And the midwife said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Mitzrayim women. For they are lively and give birth before the midwives come to them, saying this, We do not need the, outs, the, the resources of you, Pharaoh. We have all that we need. And we will let you know what is going to happen, not the other way around, is basically what they're saying. Those who spend time in and upon the birth stools will birth quicker. The more you are in the word of Yah, the faster his revelation will come. Greater comprehension of the good news will flow when it comes to the uniting of the divided house of Israel. Hebrews birth quicker. And once you cross over from religion, doctrines of men and out of the doctrines of men come to an end. When you come in from the outskirts. The doctrines of men come to an end. And out of the straw, comma, man, <laughs> you get it? So I'm, 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 I'm talking as someone who doesn't know how to really conversate right now. The straw, man, now you get it, right? So <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's in the Torah portion. I'm just repeating what's in the Torah portion. Some of you are looking at me like, hey, Ruben, throw him out. Throw the straw man out. So Elohim was good to the midwives and the people increased and became very numerous. Let's look at the birth stools. Is that the birth stools? No. I told you it wasn't. That's Egypt. What are you talking about? Bernie? Here's the birth stools right here. <laughs> the Hebrew word for birth stools is, I want you guys to say, al ha -ni. There are only three places in the Tanakh that this phrase is used like this. One of them is right here, first stools. The next one is pertaining to the covenant given at Mount Sinai. The next time it's given is in the book of Jeremiah, the potter's house of formation. So you see, and I'll just kind of sum it up with this way, so you can keep going with the verses. The birth stools that are first given that were born upon is the promise. We are to be born upon the standards of His Word. And His Word declares to us 
what our inheritance is. Living men and women are born upon the covenant stones of the Almighty, and Pharaoh knows it. Pharaoh is intimidated. Why? He says, when they're born on the stools, kill them. Why? Because as soon as they open their eyes to the promise of their true inheritance, it's too late for me. I said a whole lot without saying a whole lot. And I'm glad I did it like that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Allah. The next time we see, so that's your natural birth coming into this world. The next time is at Mount Sinai and Shavuot. That's your spiritual birth. You see, when you first are born into the things of God, it seems like things are easy, right? But Pharaoh's still trying to take you out. The next time that you experience the Ha'avanim is at Mount Sinai. That's your spiritual birth. And when you have your spiritual birth, that spiritual birth is going to lead you to the next one. It's going to bring you where? To the potter's wheel to reform your thinking and the way you live. Getting on the potter's wheel. Well, wait, I have the Holy Ghost inside of me. I have the Spirit of the Most High inside. I have the Ruach HaKodesh, all fancy, in me. Father says, that's good. That means you have your ticket to the potter's wheel. Don't waste any time. Let's go. You have to have his spirit in you in order to come to the potter's wheel. Otherwise, he can't use you. The Hebrew word for potter, I put a bunch of stuff up here. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just going to flow with this. The Hebrew word for potter is yotzer. Say yotzer. Yotzer. Yotzer also means the one who forms. This is the word that is seen when Adam was first formed from the dust of the ground. Vayatzer. Yotzer. Do you hear it? Adam was formed. Why? Because Adam's origin was in the breath of the Almighty at first. This is the formation of Adam, like the potter's wheel. His flesh was going to be united with his spirit, man. Let me see if I have that up here. Right there. And what do you know? The, the equivalent to this very thing is parallel to the Hebrew women. Jeremiah chapter 18, that's what I was doing. The wheel of formation is Ha'avanim. The same thing. Three different places that this is at. Exodus 121. And it came to be because the midwives feared Elohim that he provided households from them. Watch out. This is huge. My gosh, this is so big. You see, the Pharaoh will try to keep you in the comfort zone. The Pharaoh system will try to keep you in the comfort zone, and at the last minute, you know what the feral system does? It pulls the carpet out from under you right when you thought everything was fine. You know what one of the next big hits is? And, and no offense to anyone here, anyone watching, this, this, just mark these words. You know what the big next pull the carpet's going to be? Just watch it. Section 8 is history. Just watch. All that gone. Boom. The government systems are going to start just pulling the carpet out from under people, left and right. Just watch. Just keep watching. It is important. Lasso me if you have to. See, he's going like this right now. I'm waiting to this all That's a good hit. Abba, help me. You see, if you and I if we grab a hold of our inheritance, we don't have, there ain't no carpets under us. Yeah. We're walking as living men and women. Everywhere we step is set apart ground. Let me just go ahead. Chapter 2. And a man from the house of Levi, just kind of like tone it down. <laughs> And a man of the house of Levi went and married a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bore a son, and she saw that he was a lovely Yelet. And she hid him for three months. In the book of Jasher, chapter 67, verse 20, gives much more detail. And all the women of Egypt walking on the riverside desired to give him the breast to suck. But he would not. 
powerful. For this thing was from Yodevave in order to restore him to his mother's breast. And I have a question. Where do you get your nourishment from? And is it from Yodevave and what he has appointed? Or is it from something else? Some other woman. Is it from the milk of the Torah? Is it from the source and the nourishment of the Torah? Or is it from something else? Another spiritual breast, if I can say that. A counterfeit, listen, a counterfeit El Shaddai. If there is, if there is even such a thing. Verse 21, and Miriam, going down to verse 21 of chapter 2. And Miriam, his sister, was at that time among the Egyptian women at the riverside, and she saw this thing. That's where God says that. Really the bar. And she said to Pharaoh's daughter, look at this, beautiful. Moses' sister is in the house of Pharaoh as a Hebrew servant. And she says, I got an idea, I got an idea, I got an idea. So the baby doesn't starve, Pharaoh's daughter, you know, she loves this little boy, he's so beautiful. Why? Because the Torah is beautiful. Moshe represents the Torah. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Mashiach said it. And the scripture says, and beginning at Moses, what did he say? Moses, come here. Now, you know what I want to say, Moses? Just go ahead and say it. Go ahead. No, he didn't do it. He began with the Torah. To the Torah is Moses. Right. The writings and the prophets. So the Torah is beautiful, even to the eyes of the Egyptians, to where they want to mislabel that thing and try to twist it around as long as they can mislabel it, misname it, you name it, and, and attach it to another nourishing source the Torah will not feed from that source. The Torah finds its source from El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. It does not find its source from the breast of the Mitzrites, of the Mitzrayan women. Is that all right to say? I'm not trying to offend anyone, but that is a scripture. I can say donkey King James style. All right. <laughs> I'm getting beat up up here. <laughs> Wherever you are in the camera, we love you. And Pharaoh's daughter said, yeah, good idea, go. And the young woman went and called the child's mother, and Pharaoh's daughter said to Yochebed, take this child away and suckle it for me, and I will pay you wages, two bits of silver, daily. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And at the end of two years, when the child grew up, man, the child grew up, she brought him to the daughter of Pharaoh, and he was unto her as a son, and she called his name Moses. For she said, because I drew him out of the water. And Amram, his father, called his name Chabar. For he said, it was for him that he joined with his wife, whom he had turned away. And Yochebed, his mother, called his name Yehuthiel, because she said, I have hope for him to the Almighty. And Elam restored him unto, the, unto me. And Miriam, his sister, called him Jared, or Yerad, Yared, for she descended after him. All these names, revelations given. Moses had a bunch of different titles given to him. Man, oh man, I'm like overexcited right now. <laughs> because of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, some of you guys are really tough. And that's what helps me out. <laughs> Mike, here we go. Ready? I'm on. So all these names are given. And let's see if I have them up there. Do I have them? Yes, right here. All right. So save the reading because there's a lot of reading. So Amram called his name Chabar. Yochebed called his name Yehutiel. The sister Miriam called his name Yered. Aharon called him Avi Zanok. Kohath called him Avigador, and the nurse called him Avisuko. But when we bring this together, it's so beautiful and so powerful. Look at what it says. When you bring all these names together, my father departed with Israel as they descended into Mitzrayim to be joined to the promised seed of Abraham. He united the people. Elohim restores the hope of Israel and repairs the breach to join Israel in the dwelling place at Sukkot. So they all named Moses all these things, and all they did was put together a prophetic message of what would happen. Yeah. This is why we have to get Easter 
Get Christmas. Break the tree and then light that tree on fire and embrace the Moedim. Why? That's where you understand, excuse me, that's where you comprehend prophecy. Right. You'll meet the Mashiach where? At the Easter egg hunt? Where's, the, where's Yeshua at? Where's Jesus? Well, Jesus is here, but Yeshua's not. <laughs> Yahushua is at Passover, yes. but Jesus, he's, on, he's in the Easter basket. See this? Got that? Because that's what men have done. No offense to anyone. I know that's what you probably only knew of me too at one time. But it's a lie. We have to come out of that. Remember? Right. You, you meet the Mashiach at Pesach. Why? Because that's where you first cried out at that altar. Even if you were screaming for Jesus, the Mashiach says, I hear what you're saying and you yes. will know that I'm the Passover lamb one day. Yes. You will know my name one day. Right now you're still blinded, but I'm going to nourish you through El Shaddai. I'm the multi, I'm the I'm the bosom of the Father manifested in the flesh. So the next time a Pharaoh says, "Ah, you are not saved and redeemed by the blood because you cried out to J E S U S," tell them, you know, my my flesh said that, but my spirit has always been connected to Him. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm mean. saying. Oh, what about you guys? says this, that the Torah is powerful enough to convert your soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To cause your soul to breathe. Mm -hmm. For 210 years of bondage, we see this. As I mentioned earlier, from 1789 to 1999, we have 210 years of a collapsed citizenship and bankruptcy, and it is the name Chabar meaning to unite together and join, and it is also the phonetic relation to chavar, which means to cross over, Hebrew. Mm -hmm. We then have, no, I'll skip that. I was going to give you guys something else, but that's going too, 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 too far, so I'm going to go ahead. Mm -hmm. You've you got to study this. I want to get right back into chapter 2, mm -hmm. and it's going to be right somewhere. I don't have it here. Chapter 2, verse 11. And in those days it came to be when Moshe was grown that he went out to his brothers and looked at their burdens. Listen. And he saw a Mitzrite beating a Hebrew, one of his brothers. So he turned to, to this way and he turned that way. And when he saw no one, he smote the Egyptian. So Moses knew what he was doing because he did this, right? Like some of you used to do, right? When you're going to start the story, you used to go like this. And you used to go like that. Yeah, all of you guys. We all did, I did. That's all I came here to. I thought they were sampled. I thought that Costco was way back there in the little market by my grandma's house. I thought it was a Costco. <laughs> <laughs> I encourage you guys, if you want this, I'll send it to you. Email. You gotta read it all. There is so much. That's right. They will bless you here in peace. Not because it's me, it's because it's him. And he saw the Mitzrayim beating a Hebrew, and he turned this way and that way, and he killed the Mitzrayim, and he did what? He hid him in the sand. And many people have been lied to. All of us have here. Every one of us. So I have to ask the question on multiple levels when it comes to religion, you name it. Will you be moved by anger and hatred? Or will you be like Joseph and comprehend that Elohim permitted this to take place in your life, whatever it is? 
the generation of Moses rises up and realizes that they have been lied to. Moshe was nourished by Yochebed. The scripture says he killed the Egyptian. The Hebrew word is et ha mitzri, which is the same for Moshe and Mem, Shin, and He. So it's, it's right there. Roman, what happened is Moses, he killed the Egyptian, right? You guys read that, right? Yes. yes. But ultimately, it is actually pointing to what Moses had a hatred for was the bondage of his people. The scripture just said that. So the hatred Moses had, that Egyptian just had to, he bit the bullet of it. Moses was trying to kill the Egyptian on the inside of him. Because he was in the house of Pharaoh. He was tired. Unless you get tired, unless you get tired of the Egyptian of your flesh, you will never strike him down and bury him in the sand. Mm -hmm. Hebrews, excuse me, Romans 8.13 For if you live after the flesh youth adults if you live after the flesh listen look it you will die Romans 8.13 but if through the spirit you do mortify, put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. Meaning this, if you live according to the deeds of the flesh, the way the flesh wants to live, the scripture promises that we will surely die. But if we put to death the deeds of the flesh, we shall live. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3.5 Mortify, that means put to death, therefore your members. You see, we all have our own little congregation. Did you know that? We do. It's called the congregation of me, myself and I, and all in between. Me and all my little members. See that? Of the flesh. It's a little congregation of your own that you rule and reign over. And sometimes as you let some... Act out, and the other ones you don't. The other ones you try to hide. So that the other congregations, that their fleshly congregations, can't see those ones. But yet, when they come together, they relate to each other, and then they bump heads. That's how you know, hey, this is a congregation of the flesh here. Everyone has their own little congregation that they need to clean up. Exodus 2.13, and he went... Out the second day and saw two Hebrew men fighting, and he said to the one who did the wrong, Why did you smite your neighbor? And there are many, listen, there are many smiting each other these days. <laughs> but it's a cool word, I think it's pretty cool. You know what? I can't wait. You know what? This guy keeps talking a little smite. I'm going to smite this guy. <laughs> Seriously, and the ladies, you know what? If she keeps talking with I'm going to smite her. I'm serious, I'm going to smite her. If she keeps talking like that, I'm, I'm going to smite, smite her. her. <laughs> I'll smite her. I'll we, don't use that word. we don't even use that word. But it's a, I'm going to start using it now. Starting the day, I'm using the word smite. <laughs> so I have to pause because there's a few people laughing behind the camera. We hear you. <laughs> we have a special camera, we can see you. Look at you just stopped laughing. <laughs> you just got spiritually smited. <laughs> but there's many that are smiting each other these days, and here we have a big problem. Moshe just got through what? Reacting in his emotions due to the fact that he discovered he was lied to about his life, and all that he had been practicing was a big, fat Live. Pause the camera. <laughs> All right, Mike, I'll do it. I'll wipe my nose. <laughs> Mike has stayed John, you keep doing that, I want to smite you. That's okay. No. <laughs> so now he is presented with the problem of two Hebrews fighting each other. Both of them, two Hebrews. Stay with me, you guys, all right? I want to try to get through this whole Torah portion sections all the way to five, and then we'll close. Right after chapter five, right? All right. So that's the whole Torah portion. 
That's the other part of the uh, <laughs> <laughs> so now he had, he's presented with a problem of two Hebrew men fighting. Unless we know how to handle the religious lives we have come out of and learn how to respond and not react, there's a difference. There is no way we will be able to minister to the two Hebrew men. Or can we say to the whole house of God that has been divided? So don't throw a Hebrew picture letter at somebody and say, hey, here's what that is. Don't do that. There's a big difference. Don't do that when you can't even discern the very voice that created them. I want to be familiar and close to the voice that created those. Not just the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that had those letters all in it. Did you know that? How many people know that? Raise your hand. You were there too, huh? I would believe they did. Seriously, I would believe that they did. That was how I said they. The tree of the knowledge could be all day. So don't throw a Hebrew picture at me when you can't even discern the voice that created him. Save the fleshly insight for the man in the mirror. Moshe at this point represents those who have just found out the truth. The two men fighting are the real man and the fictitious men battling with one another. They, they're both Hebrews. Listen. The two men fighting can represent the fictitious man who thinks he's all big because everything about him is large. <coughs> Even his name is all capital letters. He thinks he's big. <laughs> but the real man is humble. He would be like, how can I word it? He'd be the lowercase letters. <laughs> the two men are battling with each other. But it would take Moshe, it would take the instructions of the Torah to really teach us some things. Both have been fighting for a long time now. Moshe just happened to notice this when he gets tired of the lies of Pharaoh's house. Verse 14, he said, Who made you a head and a judge over us? Can I keep going, you guys? Yes. Okay, good, because it's yep. going to get better. It's going to get worse, which means better. So when it gets worse, it's actually better. Just like when they create debt, they get richer. So it's going to get worse. That means it's going to get better. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Sounds good, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, it sounds like, what? No. I want it to get better. But it's gonna get it's gotta get worse before it gets better. Yes. That's mm -hmm. never mind, butter. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, Who made you a head and a judge over us? Do you intend to slay us as you as you slew the Mitzrite? Of course not. You gotta kill yourself. I can't kill you, Moses says. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm serious. Seriously, I'm sorry that you guys. <laughs> you have to slay yourself. All right. <laughs> this is really, guys. Yes. Yes. And Moshe feared and said, Truly, the matter is known. And Pharaoh heard of this. See, the Torah has already made the matter known. He knows. The Torah has already declared there's a battle between you and you. You want to be called Ma, what, when the living man says, no, I am the I of the whole thing. But you'd rather be called what, Ma? That's in the scriptures, Ma HaMitzri. What? The, the Egyptian, but why did they leave? why did they not translate the word ma, which means what? Johnny, what's your name? Uh, Jonathan, Horadan. No, it's not. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. 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 I I stepped over. But I was supposed to. Where's the Wonder Woman lasso at? Oh, he's got lasso with the sword. That's why I get frustrated. He's threatening me, guys. <laughs> so, what happens when the religious system of the day discovers that you have slain one of their favorites, the man of straw and stubble? What will happen? 
What happens when you expose the lies, slain the empirical lies of the beast system and deception that has been devouring the energy of the soul? And it's all about coming out of her, my people, on the greatest scale. And he sat down by a well. Moshe says, you know what? After all this, I need nourishment. I need to be rejuvenated. Verse 16, and the priest of Midian had seven daughters. I can simply tie this to, oh, this is the, like the seven assemblies of the book of Revelation. Well, when it comes to defeating the Mitzrayim on the inside and you have proper standing, there's seven levels you have to attack first. And they came and drew water and they filled the, the troughs to water their father's flock. But the shepherds came and drove them away. You better believe the first seven levels of your life as the real man and woman are going to be hindered by the system, the pharaonic system, the Egyptian system. <sighs> what are the seven levels?
What was I going to say? <laughs> I was going to say something. Listen. You were talking about understanding. Oh, okay, yeah. Abba, thank you, Monique. The Father does not want us to understand anything from the Scriptures, per se. He wants us to be in them. He wants us to comprehend them. How do I know that? Jeremiah says the word of Yah is like a hammer. Boom! Crushes everything. The only thing that should be under the Scriptures is your flesh. And the Father does not ever want us to understand this world system. So you, you don't need to go to school to understand a corrupt system. I'm not saying don't go to school. It's up to your parents. If they, I encourage all the parents that have their sons and daughters to drop out. No, I'm just playing. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. <laughs> Someone held a sign up and said, say it. My wife's saying you're dead. Being this. Uh, wow. 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 Black widow. I got bit by black widow today. Say it. Oh, we missed it. Funny. Oh, it's funny to me. Let me be focused here. I'm getting my side. Brown. Alright, so later. Here, when we pray for you guys, as I battle through this scripture. Exodus 2.19, they said, The Mitzvah rescued us from the hand of the shepherds, and he also drew water for us and watered the flock. The shepherd drives all enemies away in order to remove every bit of doubt and fear by his staff. Then the shepherd draws out the message from the well of salvation, so we must internalize the message of Yahushua. His testimony and blood are our very witness, as the scripture says, but do we even comprehend what that means? Do we know what it means to have the testimony? Do we really know what it means to have the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach? Do we really know? See, we stopped spiritually, and then mentally, and then our bodies begin to try to adjust to some things. But there is a, there is a powerful connection to comprehending the true redemption process of the Mashiach from above all the way below and back and forth. Just like those Malachim went up and down the Salam. The same thing. There's a message all the way from the bottom up. From the bottom up, he wants us to comprehend that. The shepherd... He drives all of them away. Verse 20, and he said to his daughters, Where is he? Uh, the priest of Midian is, is, uh, Midian is, is Hethro. He speaks to his daughters. He, he says, Where is this man? Why did you leave the man? Call him and let him eat bread. Remember, Hethro, he was someone special. He knew of the ways of the Egyptians. Hethro was there at a certain time in Mitzrayim when Moshe was a, was a little boy. Moshe had to come to the end of himself and bread is for the one who has been emptied out of himself. And you can only eat the bread of the Kohen Haggadol when you have depleted the strength of the Pharisees and the Sadducees that were once in your life. And remember, Moshe was moved by what others thought about him and he fled from Mitzrayim. Leaving Mitzrayim is actually a very good thing, but listen. But running away because of people is not a characteristic we as Hebrews have. We don't run away out of fear. We walk away because we know who he is in our life. Moshe came to this well in Midian and he, the well speaks of spiritual knowledge, not fleshly knowledge. And it came to be after these many days that the sovereign of Mitzrayim died. And the sons of Israel groaned because of the slavery and they cried out. That's powerful. It's when we cry out to yod heh that he will deliver us. We have to be tired. We have to be tired of the system. We have to come to the place where we no longer want the straw and stubble for building Pharaoh's house of cards that's about to fall. Right now it's too good and it's too easy. We must eat the bread of our high priest 
In order for our eyes to be open, we have to eat the bread of the Messiah. We have to drink the blood of Mashiach. We have to eat his flesh and drink his blood. And that's not cannibalism. He's saying, you have to let my entire purpose of being on this life become every bit a part of you. My flesh, my message, my blood, my med, the message of my blood has to become a part of your body. Redemption begins on the inside. Many love this Egyptian system and do not see another way. We must get tired of it. Apparently, one must recognize, and I use that word recognize very lightly, that they are a stranger before the Almighty begins to remember the promise. With this comprehension, we're going to remember, are we going to remember? What the Father has done through Abraham. We need to remember. Let's go to chapter 3. And Moshe was shepherding the flock of Ethra. It's going to get better, you guys. Just hold on to your horses. Getting warm in here? Some of you like this. <laughs> if you're sleepy, you know what? This is the time of humility. If you're sleepy, stand up. And just stay standing the rest of the time. <laughs> If you're tired, you just stand and wake up because your flesh needs to hear what I'm saying. I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm being very serious. We need to hear this right now. Yeah. Chapter 3, we need to hear what's in chapter 3. 4, yeah. 5, definitely. And then we're going to close, okay? We need to listen. Very important. That's why I'm standing, not sitting down so that I don't fall asleep on myself. And Moshe was shepherding the flock of Ethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back. Part of the wilderness. The Hebrew word wilderness is midaber. You guys know what that means, right? The place of speaking. Mm -hmm. You see, there's a backside of the mountain that the Father wants to take us all and speak with us. He wants to minister to us behind what everyone else is looking at. The Father says, they're looking at the front, but I want to speak to you from behind. Mm -hmm. And the messenger of Yah appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. This is so beautiful. The messenger of Yahuwah is known as the prince of the Torah and the Mashiach. The sages all agree with this. And the scripture goes on. And he looked and he saw the bush burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Wow, there's so much right there. The messenger is about to bring Moses to a higher level, and this all takes place at the thorn bush. Here we have a bush, and here we have a flame. I think I have it. Ooh, that went way off, huh? You guys should have told me. I think. Right here. This is it. I think this is it. Mm -hmm. Can I see it? Yeah, it is. Okay, that's it, right? Oh, yeah, that's it. I told you guys. Perfect. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> you see the thorn bush. The thorn bush destroys the what? Flesh. No, I just made a statement. I didn't even ask you a question. Two sandals. The thorn bush destroys the what? Period. You got it, right? You got it? You guys got it? How many people did not get that? The what is that stubble and that straw? Fictitious. When you pay a visit to the thorn bush, the thorn bush will consume the what and reveal the living soul. Moses, take your sandals off of it. Moses was shepherding the flock of Ethel, right? I read that. The messenger is about to bring Moshe to a higher level. So look at this phrase in Hebrew. We have Be Labat Esh Mitoch Hasne. And a flame of fire from within the bush. So as you see these highlighted letters, we have the man which speaks of from or within someone or person, right? Then we have the definite article, hey, the. We have be labat esh, 
which can be read as the head of a flaming sword. The Hebrew word mitoch can be read as from the mediator. So the burning bush becomes the mediator between life and death. The Mashiach is the mediator between the Father and those who are of straw. He's trying to reveal the living soul. He's a soul hunter. <laughs> Blow that if I go too far, because there's certain things that, you know, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like a, I feel comfortable. You guys are my family, so I'm wiping yeah. my nose with my hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. so, you guys do when I was looking in the car. I see you guys. I need some water. This is how we do it. Family, we relax. It's not so robotic. <laughs> and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. And Yonibab, they saw that he turned aside to see, and Elohim called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moshe, Moshe. And he said, here I am. Oh my gosh, you guys, that was like the greatest revelation ever. Yeah, right. Moshe, Moshe, and he finally says, here I am. The burning bush will change the way you've been thinking of who you are. It will show you who you are. To say, here I am, is the living man, is the living woman. Moshe was in a dead place called Mitzrayim, and it took a burning bush experience for him to declare, Moses, Moses, I have to, I have to, I have to stand as a mediator between Moses and Moses. It's a battle between death and life. Oh, you guys missed it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Moses, Moses, Jacob, Jacob, death and life. Life, to be dead and life are in the power of the tongue. You see, the Father, He goes head up with death first. I shall not die, but live in the country. In other words, death, no. No further than that. Life, live. Moshe, Moshe. Moses, Moses. And He said, here I am. And he said, do not come any closer. Take your sandals off. Now that you realize you're alive, Moses, you have to take off. Where's everybody going? We're done now? <laughs> you leaving already? <laughs> <laughs> Moses, now that you realize you're alive, you have the authority to take off those straw sandals, Moses. Mm -hmm. Take those sandals off, Moses. You are empowered to do it. You always have it. But you were so engulfed, Moses, with, with Egyptian stuff. You thought that was the thing. And when you thought that's what you were raised up for. Moses, it's at Mount Sinai where my covenant will be given that every man and woman will realize that they are a living soul. You are one in Mashiach. You're alive in Messiah, and when you come to that revelation, you can remove the sandals of straw and stubble. The Hebrew phrase is shav ne'alecha me'erag alecha. Remove from upon your life the material world that holds you back. Take off the fictitious fleshly dead man, Moses. Why? Because no dead man can stand before me. Only the living man. <laughs> this was one of Shaul's main teachings for those coming out from the nations. To remove from their life the flesh that holds them back. I would love to go a whole this football field with this one. So what happened here was Moshe was removed from his physical or his physicality in order to enter into the presence. Moshe was experiencing the creation's beginnings. Take off your shoes from your feet. Take off the fictitious traveling thing that you've been traveling in all this time. You've been using... I can't do it, boy. 
You've been using those sandals for everything now. It's time you remove those sandals. And it's time that you walk as someone who was alive. You know, it's in prison, when people are in prison, right? Sometimes someone that's the death penalty. What, what do they say? Dead men walking or something. Mm -hmm. Boy, they, were, they were dead when they came in there. Actually, can I say this? Uh, we were all dead when we were born, according mm -hmm. to the system. Mm -hmm. We were all dead according to the system that we were born, even though you were breathing and alive. Did you guys know that? Repeat that again. We were, we were all dead when we were born, according to this legal system. You see, Egypt, Egypt was a legal system that wanted to keep Israel playing in the straw. Man, leave the straw alone. Well, your question. Man, leave the straw alone. Man, woman, leave the straw alone. Some might think I'm saying something about like that. Moses, take off your sandals, for where you stand is set apart now. I'm going to go to chapter 5. Is that all right? I see there's a whole lot in there. It's like all over the place. Chapter 5, verse 1, and we'll close. See, the Messiah, when he came, he came to redeem us, you guys. Come on. On a level that we are just now really comprehending. Amen. Verse 1, chapter 5. And afterwards, Moshe and Aharon went in and said to Pharaoh, Thus saith Yehovah. See, Moses had his experience at the burning bush. You see, you have to have your experience first. Guess when? You know when? When you're all by yourself. You see, everyone that Moses grew up with in Mitzrayim were no longer with him. You have to come to the place where it's just you and the Father. And the Father is going to show you, not only spiritually and mentally, not only on a soul level, but He is going to show it. You think He just gave us these bodies because He wanted to see something decay? This fleshly body is not who we are, but it is one of the most powerful bridges between the spirit realm and this world. This is the greatest bridge ever built. Did you guys know that? This body here becomes a bridge between the supernatural and the natural. So you better believe that the demonic systems of the world want to distort what this is supposed to be. You see, when the, when the shackles are broken and the bridge is revealed. Remember that Indiana Jones movie? He's running and he stops and it's like a cliff. You guys remember that? Yes. Even if you don't, I don't care. I'm going to say it. So he's right there at that cliff, and he's, these guys are coming, right? And he has he gets sand, and he's trying to remember. He's remembering the message of his father. Only a penitent man will prevail. Only a penitent man. He kept running that, so he went, and remember, he like slid under the, under the blades, and he ducks, and those blades, it wasn't just a wind beheading, guys. It was blades. And he's still going. And he throws, but well, before he throws a sand, he steps out on the cliff, right? He goes like this. He takes a deep breath, and he goes. He's gathering all his belief, and he goes. And it looks like he's standing in midair, and it's it's a bridge that Matt, that's just meshed with the rest of the cliff, the, the the valley. And he throws sand across that bridge. You see, the Father wants to bring us to that place where you know what. Everybody else is saying, it's a cliff. Don't go there. You're going to fall off. Uh -huh. 
But it will take an Indiana Jones yeah. mindset to say, you know what? The patterns all match. And I'm going to take a step of faith because Abba, you are leading me in the right direction. And well, what do you know? Uh, what do you know? Uh, you right. just stepped that ground that seemed like it was not there. Yeah. Hallelujah. That ground that seemed like it was not there was there all along. Mm -hmm. But you had to get away from all the noise, all the naysayers. All the tail bearers. Don't go that way. That's a cliff. You guys watch, they're going to fall. Can I share something with you guys? Yes. yes. I'm going to share something small. And it's this. Do you know that? In my family, I got to say, Okanon, him too. And I don't say not favoring anybody, but only because we, we know what we're talking about. You know, certain individuals know. What I'm trying to say, and I'm like screwing it up right now. <laughs> but I'll tell you this: you know what I did now? And I praise Abba. That was me on the cliff, and I stepped out. You guys, I found out there is a bridge. Yeah. All the naysayers, you can run. You know, now you guys are there. Naysayers are gone. They can keep going. There is a bridge. Oh, yeah. And guess what? The father had me throw some, some yeah. sand, some dirt across that, so that when others who have belief for certain things, you'll see it. You'll see it because of the trail. Uh -huh. Now, I want to say so much, but I'm not. <laughs> You guys know what I'm talking about. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Believe me, I, I, this is like very humbling to see that cliff. I'm telling you guys. Very humbling to see the cliff because it looks far. But little did we know that the Father says, I have thought, I'm going to use the systems of the world to hide everything in plain sight. Right. That's why we don't walk by sight. Mm. Why? Because things are not always what they seem. And those who are in fear will call it like they see it. Because they don't have ears to hear. <laughs> Let my people go so that they can keep a moed, a festival, a feast day to me. Where? In the wilderness, in no man's land. You come to the wilderness? You can't claim the wilderness for yourself. So you have to come and you have to experience the heat. And you get to let go of your old self. You get to walk into the presence. It's not that you have. You think Israel was going into the wilderness because of some have to? No, it was an invitation. You get to. Come on, come to the wilderness. Hey, Moses, next week's tour portion. Moses. Come to me. Bo, right? Right. Come into Pharaoh's palace. Why? I'm already here. I'm standing behind Pharaoh. He can't see me. My power is, is for you, Israel. Don't be afraid of Pharaoh. And when you read Pharaoh's name backwards, what is it? Do you guys know what it is? Stiff neck. Or F. Stiff neck. It's a stiff neck. There is a generation that the scriptures talk about. It's a Pharaoh generation. They're stiff neck. They think they know it. There's a people, they're stiff-necked. You know what? No. Don't walk across that valley because there's no bridge. Walk across my neck because it's stiff. Come on. Watch out for the stiff-necked people. Those are false bridges ready to crumble. Yeah. And depending on how big their head is will determine how fast it falls and what direction. Get it? Oh, yeah. What did I mean? <laughs> Anyways, let's go on. Let my people go. Here is, the, here is the clarion call today to the religious pharaonic system. Let my people go. Exclamation marks. Let the people of Yah go from your pagan clutches and from all that has so easily trapped them. 
Father, may your spirit, may your Ruach send forth warring mighty ones that you have created for your perfect plan and purpose. Let them be dispatched like rain on behalf of your sons and daughters. In this season, Abba, we pray that those Malachim with flaming swords are dispatched ahead of time, severing all demonic forces, sending loose, powerless ones in comparison to you back to the abyss. And all the words and plans and enticements that they have tricked people with, let all of that be severed on behalf of your sons and daughters who have decided to step out by Emunah. And then that first step of Emunah is called Bitachon, that is trust. The Father says, I want you to step out into the midst of a trust that is filled with life. Step out into the trust of life. Hallelujah. I'm almost done here. Bear with me, guys. Seems like I highlighted the word straw everywhere. Because that's what they were working with. Straw, 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 straw. Straw. <laughs> But there will be an open door where the Pharaoh will tell you this. Hey, what are you hoping on? Renzo, Mike, and three guys. Go ahead and gather your straw. Gather your own straw. Gather your own straw. It's not going to be easy. But there's an open door. Go ahead. That's what he just said. Did you guys read it? He just said that. You are no longer to give the people their straw. To make bricks as before. Let them go and gather the straw for themselves. And lay on them the required amount of bricks which they made. There, you better count the cost before you take that step. There is a price. There is a price to pay. There is a narrow bridge that you cannot see unless you make a step of it. Not and trust Bitachon and you stay there. Not the Bitcoin, but Bitachon. <laughs> They are idle. That, that is why they cry out, saying, Let us go and slaughter to our Elohim. Let more work be laid on them so that they labor in it and not pay attention to the words of falsehood. Look how he twisted it. Mm -hmm. Calling the words of, of, of Yah falsehood. And the slave drivers of the people and their foremen went out and spoke to the people, saying, Thus saith this guy, the stiff necked one, you know, Pharaoh's name in reverse. I do not give you straw. Go take your go receive your it's not take it's go and receive your straw. <sighs> Thank you, Abba. I've already looked at all these words in Hebrew. Go and receive <laughs> your straw. It says for yourselves. Go and receive your straw, man. Look it up in Hebrew. Go and receive your strong man. The man 
of straw. Do as you will with that bin of straw if you know what to do. Let's see if you can figure it out, Pharaoh says. You try and figure it out. But you know what? Their mentality is so corrupt still. They think now that they got that, they still have to build the palaces and everything for the Pharaoh. The father says, no, 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 no. I've just given you the key. I use Pharaoh's stiff neck as a key to unlock a door. Wherever you find it, for your work shall not be diminished. Work is not done. And the people were scattered in all the land of Mitzrayim to do what? Gather stubble for straw. It's so beautiful. And the slave drivers were hurrying them and saying, Complete your work, your daily amount. There's not enough time left in the day. You guys better take heed. Don't take my word for it. Tick tock, tick tock. The clock is ticking around and around and around. The time is getting short. The door is open. You don't even have to pray and say, Father, open the door. No, the door is open to gather the straw. Who, who is excited about gathering the straw? One, they said in the beginning, look at how they, they, it's right here in our face. They said, quick. They burden them because there's too many of them. And here, Pharaoh's servant said, open the floodgates and let them gather the straw. You know what all they had to do? All they had to do was go out there together, grab that straw, and say, wait a minute. This is not our life. And join together in, with the realization of who the living man and woman were and are and still is today. But the people of Yah, guess what? Are not unified. You know why? The people are used to being defragmented. Excuse me. People are not used to being defragmented. They want to be confused. They want to be in the same place, especially if Pharaoh's providing all your leeks and onions. Oh! And we got grave sites for you guys, too. You know, we want to feed you with leeks and garlics and, and onions. Keep you healthy, healthy for, a, for a little bit. Healthy for a little bit. <laughs> See, Pharaoh's way of healthy is reversed. It's thy hell. The hell you go through is going to put you in the grave. He says, so you got your, your leeks, your garlic, and we even dug out some grave sites. For not only you, but your sons and daughters we don't even care about. We just want to plug you in so we can drain that energy. And when it's all drained, you know what? We'll bury you guys. We don't care about you. And then guess what? When you're buried, I'm going to close with this. And I want this, I want this to sink in. I just want this to sink in your head. When you're buried, see, that was the greatest revelation Egypt had when everything got, got all up, when, when, when there was hell breaking loose in the wilderness, right? They had grave sites for us. You see, they were brainwashed. Like that was something good for them there. <laughs> when that man is dead in the ground, that's when Pharaoh gets the greatest wealth. Pharaoh, he, he's got a name now, more than ever before. When those graves are filled with the bodies of the people, Pharaoh says, my kingdom is wealthier than ever before because of those graves. So from the beginning to your end, I'm going to make a killing off of who you are. And when you die in the end, huh, multiply that ching ching times 10. So we need to wake up Israel. Why? Because this Torah portion should be combined with the next one because of the plagues, right? But it splits here, and I'm glad it does. Because we need to think and say, you know what? 
I'm not going to gather stubble for straw for Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pay a visit to the burning bush. But before I get to the burning bush, I'm going to have to battle with the two Hebrews. Before I battle with the two Hebrews, I'm going to have to kill the Egyptian within. So when I kill the Egyptian within, then I qualify to battle another fight. That's a little harder because it's me against me. It's Moses against Moses. It's you against you. Your greatest, Muhammad Ali's greatest opponent was himself. Joe Frazier's greatest opponent was himself. Mike Tyson even said his greatest opponent was himself. The best UFC fighters in the world, the best MMA fighters in the world, they'll all tell you their greatest opponent is themselves. It has not changed. Your greatest challenge in your life is overcoming you. And if you've got too many people speaking to you, you'll never discover The Father says, I want to make a transition. Well, what do you know? has the same value as Be Yerushalayim. Be Yisrael. With Israel. Israel is to contain the great I Am inside. And if the great I Am lives in you, then that's what will come out of your mind. So I'm going to close in, in prayer. Any questions or comments or insights? Okay. Michael, Bianca, Andrew. Okay. okay. Michael. Um, man, this was just like kind of confirmation for me. A lot of the stuff you were saying, pretty much everything from the beginning to end, because uh, like last night I was just talking to whoever was on Facebook and um, just saying how like, you know, how the kingdom is within us, right? Like you were saying earlier. And that we actually are the kingdom of that, like each one of us is a different piece. So if you don't have that unity, it's not gonna, the kingdom's not gonna build. You know, you can't be a kingdom divided. Right. Right? And all this, and it's just, it was just cool. All the, you know, Hallelujah. what was going on mm -hmm. today. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. yeah. Um, I was just curious about the seven That right there, there's, <clears throat> what is that? <laughs> That is a whole discussion that will take a long time. And I pray that at the right time, the Father let me talk about that. But I want to uh, throw that out yeah. to see. Just so you guys heard it, it's there. There's something pertaining to the living man. And seven certain specific things that need to take place in order for you to recognize that you are alive and well. Uh, we believe it. But here's the thing, you know, those things are, I pray at the right time, when you're all the ones, so can you really express that? And you serve the revelation, as you need to bump this handle, now, like, the fall, like, after the, before the fall, they were light, they were, like, light, like, glowing. And they fell and they had to put on the sandals. Very good. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to say that when we remove straw, whew, man, sandals, sandals <laughs> our bodies can then walk on a new set of part land like never before? Yes. 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 That's one, yes. That's a, that's a land that's ground, that's, that's only that's set apart, as we're looking at share, set apart for the living man. We can't walk on that land until we do exactly what we're doing. What the scriptures what the scripture declare. Yeah, what the scriptures what the scripture declare. Right, what the scripture says. What God declare. What God declare. Yeah. Anybody else? Before I close in prayer. 
Father, we thank you for this Shabbat, and for your word that has gone forth. I know there's so much more that's here, and we should all be good stewards to research and to sort through. The doors open. We walk through accordingly as your spirit leads us and guides us. Father, we love you. We thank you for what you have done and what you're doing right now on this region here, on this western hemisphere. Wow. Father, may we close our ears in all doorways to, to the enemy and to anything or anyone that would be attached to that voice of the enemy. Let us be strong and bold enough to walk by the Spirit and not by the emotions of flesh. And trust and live in that trust, that living trust that you give us. We praise and exalt your mighty name. Father, we pray for Andrew that you minister to him as he cried out earlier. Your prayers, so I pray that you would touch his sugar levels in the pot. Mm-hmm. You would touch his, his flesh, man. Make him all you can do. You're instilling a love more than ever before for your Torah in his heart and in his mind and his spirit. I thank you for what you're doing for him and what you're about to do. And I pray also for everybody else here, wherever there might be a physical struggle, a mental struggle, an emotional struggle. You're very unique the way you created this, Father. We cherish every part of ourselves that you have taught all of us. And now may everything come together. Father, we declare that the, the tactics of the enemy are broken, the plans of the enemy are distorted, to confuse the enemy when he even tries to look our direction, that we would be he would be blinded to us, not even able to see. for your shalom, what you're doing right now.
But in your growing weary, ask and cry out for the strength and power. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Ah.